is something starting to break? Stocks are plummeting and bonds go nuts as economic data disappoints, Michael Snyder reports. Are the financial markets heading for trouble? There was quite a bit of panic on Wall Street on Thursday after more bad economic numbers were released. But honestly, I simply do not understand why the financial markets responded with such surprise. By now, it should be apparent to everyone that we have a weekend at Bernie's economy that is being propped up by unprecedented levels of government spending. If we actually tried to live within our means, we would immediately plunge into a depression. Our politicians definitely do not want that, and so about every 100 days, they're adding another trillion dollars to the national debt, and the vast majority of that borrowed money goes directly into the veins of the corpse that we call the U.S. economy. But even though we're absolutely flooding the system with cash stolen from future generations of Americans, economic performance has been extremely anemic. On Thursday, the government reported that the U.S. economy grew at 1.6% annualized rate during the first quarter of this year. Gross domestic product, the broadest measure of goods and services produced across the economy, grew by 1.6% on an annualized basis in the three-month period from January through March, the, commercial, the Commerce Department said in its first reading of the data on Thursday. That is much lower than 2.4% increase forecast by LSEG economists and marks a sharp slowdown from the 3.4% 3, 3 pace seen during the fourth quarter. It's the slowest pace of growth in two years. This was a worse, worst of both worlds report, slower than expected growth, higher than expected inflation, said David Donabedian. Chief Investment Officer of CIBC Private Wealth US. The biggest setback is the acceleration in core inflation, and in particular, the services sector rising above a 5% annual rate. Even if the GDP numbers were accurate, and I don't believe that they are, that would still be absolutely terrible. At this point, some pundits are using the term slowdown to describe what is happening to the economy. Some analysts believe Thursday's weaker-than-expected report signals the start of a broader slowdown in the economy. Personally, I'm entirely convinced that if honest numbers were being used, they would indicate that GDP growth is negative. But in any event, pretty much everyone agrees that we are heading in the wrong direction. In response to this bad economic news, stock prices plummeted. At one point on Thursday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down more than 600 points and it closed the day down 375 points. Stocks tumbled Thursday after the latest U.S. economic data showed a sharp slowdown in growth and pointed to persistent inflation. The Dow Jones Industrial Average slid 375.12 points or 0.98% to close at 38,085.80 weighed down by steep declines in Caterpillar and IBM. The S&P 500 dropped 0.46% to finish the session at 5,048.42, and the NASDAQ Composite lost 0.464% to 15,611.76. Not too long ago, the Dow Jones flirted with 40,000 points, and since that time, it has lost nearly 2,000 points. Will this slide eventually turn into an avalanche? What's happening in the bond market is of even greater concern. The release of the GDP numbers caused U.S. Treasury yields to go completely nuts. U.S. Treasury yields rose on Thursday after the first quarter GDP report showed slowing growth and rising consumer prices. The benchmark 10-year Treasury yield climbed 4.8 basis points to 4.702%, while the rate of the two-year Treasury gained 6.1 base points to 4.998%. At their session highs, the yields on both notes hit their highest level since November. Let's keep a close eye on this. If Treasury yields start swinging too wildly, they, this is going to have an enormous implication for those that trade derivatives. Shifting gears, we also 
just learned that the median price of a home in the United States just hit another brand new record high. It's more expensive than ever to buy a home in the U.S., according to a new report from the real estate company Redfin. The median home price hit a record $383,725 during the four-week period ending April 21st. That's up 5.2% from a year ago, Redfin found, one of the largest leaps in home prices since October 2022. Sadly, home ownership is now out of reach for a very large chunk of the population. If you can believe it, Redfin says the median monthly housing payment has risen to a record $2,843. The median monthly housing payment also jumped to a record $2,843. $843, up 13% from the same period last year. Shen Zhao, the econo economic research lead at Redfin, said prospective buyers should accept that this year is probably not the time to find a dream deal. Who can afford a mortgage payment of $2,843 a month? That is insane. Home ownership has never been more unaffordable than it is right now, and young adults that are just starting out are being hit the hardest. Earlier today, I just had to laugh when I came across an article entitled, So You May Never Own a Home, Here's Why Maybe That's a Good Thing. To me, that sounds eerily similar to You Will Own Nothing and Be Happy. And we know that uh, communist countries, in communist countries, people own nothing. Now, to me, that sounds eerily similar to the You Will Own Nothing and Be Happy, that particular article is directed at young adults in Canada, but millions of young adults in the U.S. are also wondering if they will be renting for life. Yes, there are some advantages to renting, but you are not building an equity. And I think that is what the wizards on Wall Street would like to see. I think that they envision a future in which they own almost all of the homes and the vast majority of us are renters. The good news, if you want to call it that, is that I don't think that things will ever get that far. Our entire system has started to come apart at the seams, and it would not be too long before it completely crashes. A lot of the wealth, quote-unquote, that we see on Wall Street is just a mirage. For the moment, stock prices are absurdly high because there are people out there that are willing to pay those prices. But when conditions take a dramatic turn for the worse, the buyers will all disappear and so will the absurdly high stock prices. So enjoy the last days of the bubble while you still can, because the clock is ticking. This is by Michael Snyder on the Economic Collapse blog. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support. Michael's new book, entitled Chaos, available in paperback and for Kindle on Amazon, and you can check out his new Substack newsletter right here. About the author, Michael Snyder, extremely controversial new book, Chaos available in paperback and Kindle on Amazon. He's also written seven other books in, uh, available on Amazon, including End Time, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work that he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes them by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream, the most important news, and he always freely and happily allows others to republish those articles on their own websites. You can connect with Michael on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and share his articles on your own social media accounts. It's definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge to, you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.